Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Crime Scene Talk. I am your host. Uh, today, we're going to be jumping right back into Forensic Files. I'm actually in the process of trying to work on getting my settings correct, and I'm trying to work on getting comfortable sitting here and talking in front of the camera. So we're going to just keep rolling on this Forensic Files stuff. Um, a couple of my videos have been kind of copyrighted, I guess. Um, so I'm going to try something new here. We're going to try and see if we can do this on the recording. Um, if you guys would, anybody watching, uh, giving me a sub, a like, comment, anything, anything at all would be tremendous help to me to get me rolling here. I'm trying to get started. I'm trying to get the word out. It's been a little bit more difficult than I otherwise would have thought. So any, any help that you decide to help whatsoever would be absolutely awesome. And I appreciate you guys, anyone who's tuning in at all. So here, I'm going to go ahead and see so get this thing rolling and we're going to talk about some more forensic files so i finally got my thing correct as far as which um channel to do so hopefully i can get this worked out and we will go from here i might try watching it like this actually to see if that maybe stops the uh copyright block or whatever i'm hoping this works out So this is the uh, season one, episode one. Uh, I've done a couple. I've done like four, uh, episode four, six, and seven, I think. So right now we're on one. Season one, episode one. And it is called The Disappearance of Hella Crafts. Got a trusty notepad. Starting off quick, got a private investigator. Her husband was having an affair. Lover's quarrel, typical. That's, I'm sure, probably most of these unsolved disappear well, solved or unsolved disappearances and murders, and pretty typical. Ooh. Hmm. That's how forensic science solved the puzzle. Yeah, that's right. They had a different, that's right. They had a different intro. Huh. I like these episodes because they're only like 20 minutes. A lot of the other stuff is like 45 minutes. I feel like that's just too long to do a... I just feel like like 45 minutes is a long time to do like an episode review or like a commentary. I mean, I'm pro I'm sure I'll probably end up trying it at some point, but like I can't help but feel that like 45 minutes is a lot, especially when you're talking, you know, you stop after every once in a while and you, you have to, um, you know, make commentary on it and stuff. I feel like that's a lot. We'll see. I'll probably do a couple of those just to try it out. Uh, that guy doesn't look too happy. So there's her. Happy. And there's him. Uh, granted, dudes are always weird in their pictures, but that's still, it's, <laughs> we're not off to a good start here. Uh, every single one of these dudes in here that I've watched so far, every single one of them has that awesome quality mustache. Ooh. 
Oh, that's the PI. Okay. Yeah, he couldn't be more obvious. Those are some crappy photos. Man, gotta love how far photography's come. I love the dramatization too. Here we go. It's like it actually shows like real pictures and then it cuts to something that's like <laughs> two actors that are, you know, probably just trying to catch their break and stuff. I'd rather see the real case files. The case photos. Oh, there he goes. He doesn't look as miserable in that one. Oh, part-time policeman? A pilot and a police officer? I'm not sure how that works. That's how it always starts. You know, it's just seeing the, I no longer trust Richard and blah, blah, blah. It's amazing to me because it's almost like a foreshadowing and people just don't understand. I've actually, in my own personal life, have had this happen, not this exact scenario, but like an abuse type situation where you're trying to convince somebody that you need to leave or just not be around that person because they're abusive. And it's just, it's amazing that like so many people foreshadow their own issues. Like they know it's happening, but they just, they can't bring themselves to just get out of that relationship. It's amazing. And I know it's, it's easier than it sounds, but I mean, it, the abusive relationships are never a good thing. This, this narration is like driving me nuts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, she's foreshadowing it. If anything happens to me, I didn't do it. Oops. Well, oops. Well, I have kids too. I did not see that the first time. I guess that was in that first picture, now that I think about it. Newtown? Hmm. Yeah, back in the day when <laughs> that type of stuff could just kind of blow by a police department and they didn't really have to care all that much. But uh, nowadays, that would not fly. Who was that? Nanny? So they had a nanny in the house too. This is a random interview. That is a reddish brown stain. Well, I mean, sorry to talk, it's a black and white picture, but sure, sure has the consistency of blood. Ooh. That probably seems obvious, but I'm going to bet, yeah.
spoiler alert, there's a reason why those lie detector tests are not permissible in court. Or, I guess, not necessarily not permissible, but they're not reliable in court. Henry Lee. Ooh, hopefully that didn't pop up. Okay, good. He looks like the guy that's out of the uh, Jurassic Park movies. Ah, you can see him. Uh, possible, but the bad part is then telling people if it's. Can you say when that happened? Can you say what caused it? That's part of the problem. Not 100%. It it, it goes towards the investigation, but you know you can't. That's a hard thing to show. They didn't have an exact. This was 86, and I think one of the other episodes that we watched was like uh, 87 or 89, maybe. And they had said, um, like, that was one of the first cases where they had used, I think it was, uh, I think it was semen at the time, to semen and blood to tell the DNA type. And, like, that's when they started pulling up the actual DNA profiles. I don't think this has an actual profile to it. So, like, back in the day, um, just the different blood types were what they could detect and actually present. So like I, they couldn't do like, oh, hey, this is for sure her or it's like one in one trillion of a chance that it's somebody else type of thing. This is like, hey, you can only do blood type. You can do a BPA workup on that, but on cloth, there, there's a lot of difficult scenarios that present itself and things like this. I know this is a show, but... <laughs> oh, they did find a smear. Okay. Well... Orthotolidine, that's a curious one. Orthotolidine, I wonder if that's like a blood reagent to test for, well, it looks like it probably is. Orthotolidine, I have not heard of that. We use things like tetramethylbenzidine, which is a blood identifying agent. It's not, I mean, we have to, you know, check it and make sure that um, it's giving us the reaction and it's having the correct reaction as we test it. But as far as like the blood stuff goes, yeah, that's orthotolidine. I've never heard of it. I'm sure that it's probably out of style for a reason. Um, you can do like different heme tests now. You can do, uh, like I said, we have, it's called, uh, it's called tetramethylbenzidine, which is also known as TMB. And um, all you do is put some hydrogen peroxide on there and do some, uh, like you collect a little sample hydrogen peroxide and then you put the TMB on and, or well, TMB first and then hydrogen peroxide. But that facilita facilitates a color change uh, indicating blood. It doesn't tell if it's human blood or if it's animal blood, but it will either be a, it's a presumptive test and it's either positive or negative. Oh, 
on the I said it in one of my other videos, I'll say it again. Witnesses. Look at those old cars. Oh, old school. That screams 80s. Uh oh. <gasps> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> that's not as good as the murder weapon itself, but that's, that's a good find. All, all because of a witness. All because of a witness. <laughs> He's like, I'm out. <laughs> I want to retire. This is some good police work right here. They're sifting, they're literally sifting through mud and debris to get whatever they can for this. That is dedication, and it is impressive. And another piece of evidence which just appeared. The sun had melted the snow away from this wall. And uh, right against the wall, right, right on top of the leaves, a piece of candle. Ooh. Divers explored. And that's another gold, gold strike right there. The bottom of the river and found pieces of a chainsaw. Even more unusual. By now, the story was front page news around the world. Richard Kraft was a suspect, but he maintained his innocence, saying he didn't kill his wife, he didn't know her whereabouts, and that he had passed a lie detector test. But the forensic Of course he's going to hang his hat on that. And that's another thing that they can bring into court, because, hey, oh, well... You know, that can be kind of convincing to a jury if you think about it. You give somebody a lie detector test and they pass it, right? So that's part of the problem of giving somebody that in the first place. Ooh, forensics. So like, got a chainsaw and a wood chipper. This sounds this is getting set up to be pretty pretty nasty. I mean, but who's to say he didn't give it to somebody else? You know, he got it from somebody else. These serial numbers are not great. They're great for running, but uh, let's see if they're stolen or whatever. But hmm. 
Now we're starting to paint a picture. Forensic experts wanted to find out whose hair was on the chainsaw and at the rivet. Every one of the 2,660 hairs was examined under a microscope. That's a lot of hairs. They found a lot of hairs. 2,000 hairs? And they really put their backs into this one. They're gonna they're gonna say they were hers. I mean, even, w whether they were or were not. That is much better. That's a much better piece of evidence. True. That's true. From one of my favorite TV shows, not my, not one of my very favorite TV show, Psych. Absolute best TV show ever. It's inaccurate, but the comedy and characters are immaculate, and the writing is amazing. But um, yeah, no body, no crime, uh, and that would be season three, episode two. You're welcome for that. I mean, this is all great stuff. Like, that's, I mean, that's pretty good stuff. They're analyzing the stuff under the microscope. The, the good thing is, this all point, paints a very big, clear picture against our suspect. The bad news is, there's, they, they don't have a body, and some of these, for some of these things, can you, it's tough to say, like, was that wood chipper? So it was the same wood chipper, right? Allegedly. But then if you end up testing it, I mean, it could be... <sighs> it's because it paints this picture, but in court... It could present issues. This type of like, hey, oh, everything matches. The, the nail polish matches. The hairs match. It's, it's good forensic work. But part of the problem is that some of this technically is still coincidence. Um, now, the jury probably wouldn't see something like that that way. But the, the problem is it's like people could have issues going into court and saying, oh, well, do you know, you know when that happened? Do you know how it happened? Um, and some of these answers are just going to be, I don't know. So it's, it's the detective's job and the caseworker's job to sit there and sift through all of this stuff and paint the picture. But like, as far as the forensics are concerned, it's just one cog in a giant machine. So like, yes, this is all extraordinarily important, but the witness testifying is going to be highly important. Obviously, the detectives doing all the work is going to be highly important. I mean, you're going to have, for a murder trial like this, you're going to have many, many people on the stand. And, of course, the defense is going to bring up every possible flaw and or issue with all of this evidence. Now, granted, they can do that. That's that's their job. Um, and it'll be up to the jury to decide what happens to this guy if he ends up getting charged even. Uh, we don't know yet. 
Oh, they're doing spectrology. We still haven't identified her. She still hasn't been identified, though. And there's... I guess, I guess we'll see. I wonder if this is going to be like, oh, hey, we just introduced a new technique and confirmed it was her. That is the million dollar question. That's a common technique nowadays, especially with teeth. Teeth are great for that. Ah. Those are also another great way to identify people. Jeez. What did he find? More good work. Sometimes it just takes a stroke of luck. I mean, seriously, sometimes it's just luck. As a matter of, like, for finding out some of this stuff, luck is a huge factor. Yes, but uh, did her tooth get pulled, or is she dead? Like that's kind of the uh, that's the bad part about that is it's like if they were like that fingernail would be important, especially nowadays. Like you could identify, you could physically use that to identify an actual DNA profile. That would be you know a one in one trillion of a chance that it's you know, her, as opposed to, um, you know, just kind of speculating, like, oh, it's typo blood. Well, that's cool, but, or typo positive, but I have O positive blood. So, like, I mean, it, forensics has come a long way. To be fair, that's a lot of uh, evidence painting the picture, so. <laughs> this is pure speculation. Unless he ended up confessing and described exactly how it went. This is uh, speculation. It's not usually how that works. <laughs> oh no.
in the police flashlight, the first one knocked her to the ground. The second produced the blood flash. They haven't mentioned a flashlight at all this episode. Why do they think it's a flashlight? I guess maybe I'm confused. I don't know if they, maybe I missed it, but kind of a weird thing to decide to isolate. Could be anything. That's TV though. They're probably just, oh, it's probably some a blunt, blunt object. Did I miss something too? Would it... Yeah, this is got this is just like pure speculation for TV purposes. I didn't think that they they found fibers from her shirt, but not from the bed. Unless I missed it. <laughs> Richard tried to clean up the blood with some towels which were later washed. The traces of blood remained on the towels, later discovered by Dr. Luke. Marie Thomas, the man, he arrived home around 2 a.m. Yeah, live in nanny. I wish we had one of those. Oh. Old school. Blood spatter. Spatter. That's actually a good point. That would be kind of interesting. Frozen? There is no such thing as the perfect crime. There are way too many variables. There's way too many. There's just way too many variables. There's no such thing as the perfect crime. The only way, this is another side quote, the only way that it could possibly be the perfect crime is if they make it look like the perfect crime. Clearly, it's not a perfect crime. They have, like, an actual U-Haul-sized trailer full of evidence against this guy so far. <laughs> that is true. That is true. You know, like I said, you depend on everybody. On the, that's a wonderful picture. Got to depend on the forensics guys. You got to depend on the detectives. You got to depend on the witnesses. The whole thing has got to come together in a flawless presentation for court. Eleven men and one woman found him guilty. First degree murder without a body. Hmm. Of course he does. Well, that's cool. All right. pretty sweet actually that was the first episode which weirdly enough was better than the episode i watched a couple days ago it was oh legionnaires disease that's right it was that um it was that legionnaires episode where we it was about by um um it was about like a disease or something which i'm like forensic files for this disease thing that doesn't make sense but um i feel like 99 percent of the episodes are probably um actual like murders and, and police cases and that type of stuff. So um, that was episode one, season one. And that was actually pretty good. I like that. 
Um, I think that will end our recording here, and it's probably go up on the YouTube page. Hopefully, I can get that copyright uh, notice taken down. Um, hopefully, I get that figured out. And um, so this is gonna be another video. Hopefully, you guys tune in again. If you guys tune in and you guys do me an immense favor if you liked, if you commented, if you subscribed, any one of those three, any combination or all three would be spectacular. So if you guys could do that for me, that would be fantastic. I'm just trying to get off the ground here. I'm trying to get, I'm, I'm doing these kind of nice, easy, um, kind of easy kind of tee up stuff for recordings for this. I'm trying to get used to talk to the camera, trying to get more confident in front of the camera, that type of stuff. So um, I have tons, tons, tons more stuff that I'm hoping to get uh, out to you guys and out to everybody. And uh, we'll see. I mean, my goal is to do this for a long time and I got all kinds of fun, fun stuff planned. And I don't know, we'll see. We'll kind of take it where we go. If I start getting audiences, if I start getting comments about asking about, you know, if I can do this or if I can do that, or I can talk about this, I can talk about that. That would be great. That's kind of my ideal scenario. So like, that's why I really need and want people to, to start commenting and, um, start following as well. You guys can follow me on, I am on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitch, and then obviously here on YouTube and, uh, I actually Twitter as well. And they are all the same. Um, these are all the same tags. It's all at crime scene talk, all one word. So that's me. Um, again, I'm Kevin and, uh, I am your crime scene host here. So I'm hoping that I can get, you know, more and more people to, to, come talk some crime scene shop with me and, 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 you know, figure out what they like and interest them about it. And hopefully I can answer some questions and we can have some fun along the way. So, um, I do appreciate you guys stopping by every little bit helps. And if I could, uh, just get you guys to help me out. And if you guys like this stuff, please support me. I appreciate it. Thank you much.